Hey, how's it going guys? In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a chess game that I played online recently, which culminated in a pretty crazy attack and brilliant move to win the game. This game came from a rather tame opening, where against the Scandinavian, instead of playing a typical knight c3, I play knight f3 and bishop e2, which looks insanely passive. But actually carries some decent venom to it. Before I explain why it carries some venom to it, if you enjoyed today's video I'd really appreciate it if you drop a like and subscribe, it really helps to support the channel. But with that said, the reason this is a good variation is because while black does you know typical Scandinavian developing moves, I get to get my bishop out, my knight out and my king castled quickly. And then I, I, I keep delaying this knight c3 move. I don't know why my hours are being weird. Apologies. But I keep delaying this knight c3 move, which typically is played on, you know, this move of the game. The third move it's normally played. But I delay it because I want to go c4. With a knight on c3, this pawn push would be blocked. But c4 now comes with tempo on the queen. So after the queen retreats, I can then bring my knight to c3. So I'm not locking this pawn in on c2. I allow it to advance to c4 with a tempo, then develop the knight so that I get this big center with both my d and c pawns rather than just my d pawn. Because this d5 square with the pawn on c2 is often a good uh, square for black to transfer his knight to in a lot of uh, situations. So I think this is quite a nice uh, like variation to play against the Scandi. And the bishop on e2 is actually quite useful, as you'll see. So we have bishop e7, b3. The computer doesn't like b3. It wants knight h4 um, attacking this bishop straight away, which makes sense. But I play b3 because I don't... S I don't see a point in putting the bishop on f4 because it's not looking at anything. I don't want to bring it to g5 because black can simply retreat the knight and secure a bishop trade, which I don't want. So I put my bishop on b2 with the intention of d5 opening up the diagonal for the bishop in the future. Even though there's several pieces in the way at the moment, this could come, you know, loose. And it also means that if my opponent plays c5 or e5, which are typical Scandinavian moves to challenge the d4 pawn, then it will liberate my bishop. So I kind of make it so that it's difficult for my opponent to get any play without giving me something in return, i.e. activity for my dark squared bishop. So we have rook e8, knight e5, just jumping into the center because... My opponent hasn't brought a knight to d7 to challenge it yet. He does challenge it, but then I get f4, known as like a Pillsbury knight, where if my opponent takes, I take with the f pawn, the knight moves, and now the f file opens up for my rook, which gives me nice attacking opportunities in the future. But after f4, my opponent plays knight b6. This isn't a great move, because it allows g4, supported by this bishop on e2 and the knight attacking the bishop and after bishop g6 I can play f5 and after takes takes bishop h5 I'm winning a piece or am I? Ah, uh, queen d4 check wins the knight back I didn't want to commit to g4 just yet because I was worried about my king's safety so I went to h1 because if the queen never gets to take on d4, it no longer comes with a check on the king, right? Because, or if the bishop comes to c5 at some point, it won't come with a check. So I'm just preparing. Knight e4. I go bishop f3. Just getting my bishop on a nice square. Attacking the knight, forcing it to make a decision. We have takes takes, which means my bishop is now active. And ready to get into the game some point after maybe d5 is played. 
we have h6. I play queen e2 because I want to bring a rook to d1 so that the d4 pawn is very well protected. And like I said, d5 might become a possibility. My pieces are very active here. And this knight is really difficult for black to deal with. If he goes f6, I can just retreat the knight. And black has weakened his light squares majorly by advancing the pawn. And if he tries to challenge it by bringing his knight back to d7, which is the best move. Not only has he wasted time going to b6 and back, but if he ever takes me, then I'm just going to take back with the f-pawn and I get what I want anyway, an open f-file for my rook. So he plays bishop f6 to just develop the bishop, attack my knight, I play rook hd1, we have queen c7, just developing the queen, potentially bringing a rook to d8. I play bishop e4, again, g4 might have been the better idea, but I decide to trade off these bishops because I feel like my queen is now incredibly active and really can't be attacked despite being on such a central square. Rook hd8, knight to g4 attacks the bishop, puts pressure on h6, f5 might become a possibility, and d5 again, if this bishop is forced back, can open up my bishop. Bishop e7, which is a mistake, but it also looks like the most logical move. The computer wants knight to d7, and says taking back with the knight here is good. But I could also just not take him. It's also hard to give up your bishop, in situations like this where my bishop could become so strong at some point you would like a counterpart to you know challenge my bishop in the future so he goes to e7 which looks logical i play rook f3 and rook f3 is designed to come to g3 to set up ideas say he plays a couple of nothing moves set up ideas of knight takes h6 check where he can't take because there's a pin and even if I can't play that move the bishop and the rook can at some point team up on g7 and d5 could come with a tempo of threatening rook g7 so my opponent has to play accurately to not lose here bishop h4 is the computer's favorite move stopping rook g3 because my rook's hanging or bishop d6 stopping rook g3 Although we actually can't take here because of knight s6. So it wants king h8. That's so tough. It's such a tough position for my opponent to play. And he blunders with queen c8. Queen c8 makes sense. Now in I remember in the game, when I saw queen c8, I was like, what? I, I, I don't understand. I realized after my next move that the point was f5. Like I realized immediately after playing rook g3 during his like 20 second thing that f5 was the idea. With the queen on c7, I could take on e6 with check, therefore getting my queen out of the way of the attack and then saving my knight. And this would be great for black, this position, if I didn't have knight takes h6 check. Now it can't be taken because of the pin. So what happens if king to h7? Well, if king h7, I can drop my queen back. If he takes the knight with the pawn, then queen to h5, and he's getting mated. Now rook g8 stops queen to g6, but it doesn't stop queen to f7. And after king to h8, I have d5 with check. And this bishop, from, you know, not participating in the game, suddenly wins the game. Because it's mating a couple of moves, once black sacrifices all his pieces. So, my opponent opts for king to f8. If he goes to h8, there's ideas of knight to f7 check, king moves, and I can threaten mate on g7. So he goes to f8, and I go queen to e5. 
The computer actually wants d5 straight away because this is mate. I actually didn't see this. I played queen to e5, threatening mate, because I saw a different checkmating idea. After bishop f6, I would love to go for this and give a check here, cutting off the escape square, because the king has no moves. But after c5, my opponent can give up his queen. Oh, I actually can't take it, because, wow, well, I have to do this. And if he goes back, then it's mate. So if he goes here, ah, then this comes with check. And if he goes, yeah, that's his only move. Okay. I didn't see that, but the idea was that I couldn't take here first because his queen could sacrifice for the bishop to block the check. So I go queen b4 check first because if c5 now, bishop takes, after the queen sacrifices herself, I can take back with the queen. And then I'm up a queen for the bishop. So after queen b4 check, he plays rook e7. I could take like this. And I'm going to mate my opponent at some point anyway. Um, like this, actually. But there's an even nicer move, which I'm sure at this point you can guess, which is queen takes f6 check. Now, I did see this from back here. I saw this line. Because knight takes h6, h6 check doesn't really work unless I can move my queen with an actual threat. Because if here I have to move my queen, I'm just going to lose the knight. Right? So I have to see from here that after f5 I'm good because of this line. Where I don't have to move my queen, I can play queen b4 check first. And then sack my queen on f6 with check. The king, if it goes to e8, is mated on e7. So he has to take with the g-pawn. And then rook to g8 checkmate is the move. The bishop snipes from this side of the board. The knight covers the crucial f7 and g8 squares. And then the rook covers the rest. And I thought this was a really nice move. Queen takes f6 check. Not because I saw it in this position. Because here it's quite obvious. But because I saw it in this position. Where I have to see it after rook g3. Because bishop f6 comes with an attack on the queen. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you found it entertaining. Maybe instructive with some of the explanations. I try to be quite in depth at some in some instances, try and give you guys a bit more of an insight into my thought process to help you improve. But yeah, that being said, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.